the purple jar. Rosamond, a young girl of approximately seven years, strolled through the streets of London with her mother. Passing by various shops, she peered into their windows, marveling at the assortment of unfamiliar items. Eager to stop and explore the bustling crowds, carts, carriages, and wheelbarrows in the streets made her hesitant to release her mother's hand. Mother, how happy I would be, she exclaimed near a toy shop, if I had all these lovely things. All of them? Do you desire them all, Rosamond? Her mother inquired. Yes, Mom, every single one. As they walked, they reached a milliner's shop adorned with ribbons, lace, and artificial flowers. Oh, Mom, those roses are exquisite. Shouldn't we buy some? Rosamond pleaded. No, my dear. Why not? Because I don't need them, my love. Continuing their journey, they encountered a jeweler's shop, displaying an array of pretty trinkets behind glass. Mom, will you buy some of these? Rosamond asked. Which ones, Rosamond? Any of them, Mom, they're all so pretty. Yes, they are all pretty, but what use would they serve me? Use? Oh, I'm sure we could find some use once we buy them. I'd prefer discovering their use first, her mother responded. Disappointed that her mother wanted for nothing, Rosamond's attention was drawn to a chemist's shop without her knowledge. Oh, mother? Look at those colors, blue, green, red, yellow, and purple. Beautiful things. Won't you buy some? She exclaimed. Again, her mother replied, What use would they be to me, Rosamond? You could use them as flower vases, Mom, and they'd look so pretty on the mantel. I wish I had one. But you have a flower vase, her mother reminded her. And it's not meant for flowers. But I could use it as a flower vase, Mom, you know. Maybe if you examine it closely, you might be disappointed. No, indeed. I'm sure I wouldn't. I'd love it. Regretful that her mother needed nothing, Rosamond speculated on another reason. Then, mother, she said after a pause, maybe you don't have money. Yes, I do. Dear me. If I had money, I would buy roses, boxes, purple flower pots, and everything. Rosamond paused in her speech. Oh, Mom, would you stop for a minute? I have a stone in my shoe, and it hurts so much. Why is there a stone in your shoe? Because of this big hole, Mom, it comes in there. My shoes are completely worn out. Could you please give me another pair? Well, Rosamond, I don't have enough money to buy shoes, flower pots, boxes, and everything. Rosamond thought it was a great pity. However, as her foot, injured by the stone, caused her considerable pain, she had to pause in her thoughts. Soon, they arrived at a shoemaker's shop. There. Mom, there are shoes, little ones that would fit me perfectly. Shoes would be really useful, Mom. Yes, they would, Rosamond. Come in. Following her mother into the shop, Rosamond discovered that Mr. Soul, the shoemaker, had a full shop, and they had to wait. Well, Rosamond, her mother remarked, do you find this shop as pretty as the others? No, not at all. 
It's dark and black, with nothing but shoes around. And there's a very unpleasant smell. That smell is new leather. Is it? Oh, look at those little shoes. They'd fit me perfectly, I'm sure. Perhaps they might, but you can't be sure until you try them on, just like you can't be sure you'd love the purple vase until you examine it more closely. Well, I don't know about the shoes until I've tried them, but, Mom, I'm sure I'd love the flower pot. Well, which would you prefer, that jar or a pair of shoes? I'll buy either for you. Dear Mom, thank you. But if you could buy both? No, not both. Then the jar, please. But I should let you know I won't be getting another pair of shoes this month. This month? That's a very long time. You can't imagine how these hurt me. I think I might have the new shoes. Yet, that purple flower pot. Oh, indeed, Mom, these shoes aren't so bad. I believe I can make them last until the end of the month. Can't I, Mom? Don't you think so? Think for yourself, my dear. You have time to decide while I talk to Mr. Soul about my boots. After the conversation with Mr. Soul, Rosamond's mother asked, Well, my dear, have you decided? Mom? Yes, I believe so. If you please, I'd like the flower pot. That is, if you won't think me very silly, Mom. Well, I can't promise that, Rosamond. But when it's your decision, choose what will make you happiest. It doesn't matter what others think of your choice. Then, Mom, if that's all, I'm sure the flower pot would make me the happiest, she said, putting on her old shoe again. So I choose the flower pot. Very well, you shall have it. Clasp your shoe and come home. Rosamond clasped her shoe and followed her mother. It wasn't long before the shoe slipped down at the heel, and she had to stop to remove stones from her shoe and hop with pain. Yet the thought of the purple flower pot persisted, and she stuck to her choice. When they reached the shop with the large window, Rosamond's joy intensified upon hearing her mother instruct the servant to buy the purple jar and bring it home. As he had other tasks, he didn't return with them. As soon as she entered, Rosamond rushed to gather her flowers from a corner of her mother's garden. I'm afraid they'll be dead before the flower pot arrives, Rosamond, her mother said as she was coming in with the flowers in her lap. No, Mom, it will come home very soon, I'm sure. Won't I be very happy putting them into the purple flower pot? I hope so, my dear. The servant took much longer than Rosamond expected to return home. But eventually, he came with a long-awaited jar. The moment it was placed on the table, Rosamond ran up with an exclamation of joy. Can I have it now, Mom? Yes, my dear, it's yours. Rosamond poured the flowers from her lap onto the carpet and seized the purple flower pot. Oh, dear mother! She exclaimed after removing the top, but there's something dark in it. It smells very disagreeable. What's in it? I didn't want this black stuff. Nor did I, my dear. But what should I do with it, Mom? I cannot tell, but it will be of no use to me, Mom. I can't help that. But I must pour it out and fill the flower pot with water. 
That's as you please, my dear. Will you lend me a bowl to pour it into, Mom? That was more than I promised you, my dear, but I will lend you a bowl. The bowl was brought, and Rosamond started to empty the purple vase. To her surprise and disappointment, when it was entirely empty, it was no longer a purple vase. It was a plain white glass jar that had appeared to have that beautiful color from the liquid inside. Little Rosamond burst into tears. Why are you crying, my dear? Her mother asked. It will be as useful to you now as ever as a flower vase. But it won't look as pretty on the mantelpiece. I'm sure if I had known it wasn't really purple, I wouldn't have wanted it so much. But didn't I tell you to examine it? Perhaps you would be disappointed? And I am indeed disappointed. I wish I had believed you beforehand. Now I'd much rather have the shoes because I won't be able to walk all this month. Even walking home that short distance hurt me a lot. Mom, I'll give you the flower pot back and the purple stuff if you'll only give me the shoes. No, Rosamond, you must stick to your choice. Now the best thing you can do is to bear your disappointment with good humor. I'll bear it as well as I can, said Rosamond, wiping her eyes, and she began to fill the vase with flowers slowly. Yet Rosamond's disappointment did not end there. Many difficulties and distresses arose from her imprudent choice before the end of the month. Her shoes deteriorated daily until she could neither run, dance, jump, nor walk in them. Whenever called to see something, she was adjusting her shoes and always ended up being late. Whenever her mother went for a walk, Rosamond couldn't join due to her shoes' lack of soles. Finally, on the last day of the month, her father suggested a visit to a glass house she had long wished to see. Despite being ready with her hat and gloves, as she hurried downstairs, her shoe fell off. She quickly put it back on, but her father noticed. Why are you walking slipshod? No one must walk slipshod with me. Rosamond, I thought you were always neat. Go, I cannot take you with me. Rosamond blushed and retreated. Oh, Mom, she said as she removed her hat, how I wish I had chosen the shoes. They would have been much more useful than that jar. However, I am sure, no, not entirely sure, but I hope I will be wiser next time.